Hello everybody. In this episode I am kind of concluding my series on editing this video that we've been going over over editing a short film. And uh, we've done some cleanup on this thing, we've done some sound mixing, and now I'm going to be going over color grading. And color grading is kind of the overall process of not just fixing the colors and matching them from shot to shot, it's also kind of giving it a look, giving it a very specific uh, filmic look or whatever you're going for. Uh, to kind of finalize your project. In fact, this footage here was uh, was shot on a red here, red camera, and this footage tends to come across a little flat. Uh, this raw fo footage, that, this footage that we have here, this is not the actual red footage, but it was actually compressed, so I could kind of use these as exercise files for people to access and and do the editing on and be able to follow along. If this was the raw data, you could access the raw data and tell. In fact, that's what I did to provide this footage. I intentionally made it very flat. I put it in red film log film log uh, LUT to make it look very flat to give it kind of a higher dynamic range before I exported these exercise files out. So this is very flat looking. First step we're going to do here, we're going to go through this in three steps. We're going to go through, uh, first of all, what are called the scopes. And those are like actual arbitrary measurements that's been created by uh, several standards committees uh, based on detail loss and darks and highlights, saturation levels, hue levels, a whole bunch of different things dealing with color and brightness levels. Then after that, in the next episode, we're going to be going through the controls that you have with the color lumetri panel. In fact, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to color arrangement and kind of and get this arranged so you see this is where that when you go to color, you have the lumetri color panel here, you have the scopes up here, and uh, we're going to go through the scopes first, then we'll go through the panel, and then we're going to show actually how to grade this graded project and uh, some of the tips and tricks to get through getting a full grade on a project done. So first of all here, let's start going over the scopes. Uh, when you first bring this up, if you have never messed with this scopes, it will probably, and by the way, I'm right clicking in this area right here. I'm going to check mark two other scopes that are going to uh, pop up and show here. It will likely show all five of these scopes if you've never uh, toggled these on and off. I'm going to move my mouse over this and hit tilde and show these scopes really quick. Let's go through the names of these scopes and what and basically what they do. First of all, two of them I'm not going to cover because uh, in, on my honest opinion, they are, this here the histogram that's a vertical histogram is a complete waste of space. Uh, this thing has a luminance channel that's uh, superimposed over a blue channel, a green channel, and red channel, and it's just all smashed together when they could get way more real estate from by going left to right. Uh, it's the way Resolve does it, and the, the scopes, the RGB histograms in Resolve are actually pretty useful. These ones in Adobe, in my opinion, fairly useless. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to get rid of my histogram because we're not going to be going over that. Uh, another one that's kind of weird that came from the speed grade days is this one right here, which is their HSL vector scope. Normally in just regular color grading, people are using this vector scope right here, which is just commonly known as a vector scope. Uh, they call it the YUV uh, vector scope. And then this bottom one down here is called the HLS uh, vector scope. I've looked up this a couple times online and I can't really find, I can find some text information on it, but really no good visual information as to what it does. I've kind of messed with it and it has, it seems like it kind of deals a little bit with, uh, with vibrance. Uh, from what I can tell, but aside from that, it's, it's really tough to tell what the scope does. If you know what it does, let me know. I've been grading for color grading for years. I've been using Resolve for years, years, and the only time I've ever seen the scope is in Premiere Pro. Well, Speed Grade first, and then I'm, then they moved it to Premiere Pro. And I'm not knocking on their color grading system because for an editing software, they've got a really nice color grading system going on here. So I'm going to uncheck my H HLS vector scope as well, and now we've got the three scopes up that I that are are very useful the waveform, the vector scope, and the RGB parade, or just commonly referred to as the parade. The way I usually like to arrange these things is exactly how they're arranged right now. I like the waveform first, the vector scope next, and then the uh, the parade down below, because this actually takes a waveform and spreads it across this whole bottom panel, which gives you a little bit more real estate for having actual, this is actually three different scopes here, and it's spreading those three scope, scopes across the, the bottom. If you had it crammed up here, it would be a lot more cramped, and it would be kind of hard to read. So if you do have these things arranged uh, in a way that is not useful to you, let's uh, uncheck a couple things here. So now watch, when I if I just have one uh, scope here and I right click and I add, uh, let's add our waveform here. And our waveform, look how it kind of makes this thing compact and squishes them down and you don't have as much real estate for each one of these scopes here. This is red channel, green channel, blue channel. Uh, so what you can do is if you have that, have it like this and, and you want this one down here, all you have to do is right click and uncheck the one that you want on the bottom, which is the parade here. I now right click and check it again. And since these ones have now become first, I put this one on the bottom. It does it from kind of top left to right to the bottom 
uh, hierarchy there. All right, another thing I usually like to do, sometimes this waveform is not on Luma. Sometimes you'll see it on RGB, which has your red channel, your green channel, and your blue channel blended all together. I kind of like to use my waveform, and you can use this down here for color and for color balance. I like to use, this is basically a composite of this, this and this laid out the red, green, and blue channel smashed over the top of each other, plus the luminance channel. I kind of like to just see my luminance channel here, and so I could really just work with brightness levels and contrast. So I'm going to right click on this, and I'm going to go down to waveform type and tell it to just show the luma waveform, which now just shows brightness levels. All right, so to go over the names of each one of these here, first of all, this is our waveform monitor. And the waveform monitor is used mostly and primarily for luminance. And by luminance, I mean brightness levels. I mean darks, highlights, whites, mids, which are your grays, anything that goes from black on a gradient to gray to white as the way you can kind of envision that. And this is a measurement of your image from left to right. So this image that we have up here right now, let's move over this one right here. As we move across the screen here, uh, what the zero does here, th this is zero IRE. This is measured on a scale of I what's called IREs. IRE is basically Institute of Radio Engineers. It is a standard and um, an arbitrary standard setup where, where they have defined where details disappear. Uh, first of all, at zero, this is where details disappear in the darks. Uh, so when things start to go black and it goes so black that you no longer see detail or texture in it, that is what happens at zero IRE. As you go up to 100, 100 is where details disappear in the opposites, in the, in the highlights or the whites, in things that are white on your screen. If anything touches this up here, the details are starting to disappear and be crushed. Now 50 is what is considered 50% gray. That's perfectly in the middle of black and white and you got this kind of mid gray that even in fact they just call this mids, uh, the mid grays. Your image is measuring mid grays. If we look at this image here and we start moving across and all of a sudden there's this spike right here. It's like it's like around 20 IRE. So it's a kind of a dark gray and all of a sudden this boosts up to 50 IRE and then there's a little dip there in black and then it boosts back up to 50 IRE. And look at this, your image here as you move about that far over, all of a sudden you have this little brightness level right there then the black level, and then the white level right there. So this is measuring your image from left to right, from right to left. As we move over, see, in fact, this lamp is about three quarters of the way over. As we move over three quarters of the way, we move up. Look at that uh, bright highlight there going around 80 IRE. So that's uh, bright. It's not quite losing detail yet, but it's close. And this lamp here is burning around, looks like around like 60 to 60 to 70 IRE. In between 60 and 70 IRE is what that lamp is burning at. So the waveform really tells you, first of all, what your kind of basic exposure is of your image. And just looking at this, overall, this looks like kind of a darker image. It's around, topping out around like 40, uh, around 40 IRE, coming up to the mid-gray. So, so you have some properly exposed stuff in here, but not much. Everything's pretty lowly exposed in here. And also, another thing that I can tell from this is what's called contrast. Uh, let's kind of mess around with the image over here. I'm going to move over to the side. We're going to get into the controls, but right now I'm just going to mess with this image right here and watch my waveform here. In fact, let's just bring up my waveform. And I'm going to grab the exposure, and I'm going to boost this up. And look what's happening to your image. Your image is becoming brighter, but it is, it's also getting kind of blown. It's getting blown out, and the texture's being blown out as, as well here. This has been tended to be a dark image. It was shot at, at, at um, in a, as a darker image. So if we keep that kind of dark there, watch what happens as I grab contrast and drag this over. Look at my waveform there. What that's doing is it's pushing the darks down while lifting the highlights up and we're getting what's called contrast. That's where contrast is defined as the, uh, the distance between your highlights and your darks. And when you spread those out, you get more contrast. As you pull them closer together, you get a, what's called a flat image. So this is looking very flat. And look at this is how, how this is flattened out. So to pancake that image there. And you're getting a pancake. As they get closer and closer to find to each other, they're going to get closer to that mid-gray region. And they're going to be, and there's not much definition in here because everything is so closely defined in the same area. So to take that further apart, we get contrast. In fact, if we even go to our curves where you have a lot more power, now if we move everything basically to mid grays here, move our, our darks to mid grays and move our highlights to mid grays, look what happens to our image. Our image becomes this mid gray image and everything is squashed together in this so there is no definition in our image, no contrast. As we start pulling contrast out of it, we start, as we start, yeah, as we start spreading these apart here, bringing the bottoms down and the highlights up, uh, we start getting more definition in the image here. So if we really wanted to get contrast to this, we're going to get into this later, but we're going to show you how to do what's called an S-curve. This is an S-curve where you get a really nice kind of contrast curve uh, to this image. There you go. 
So that's before and after. So you guys are working with that flat footage, and then that's afterwards, after we add a little bit of contrast. All right, so that's what that scope is for, is measuring darkness levels, brightness levels, and uh, make sure you're not losing detail. Uh, it shows where your mid-grays are and shows uh, contrast as well. Let's go through our next scope here. Our vector scope YUV, or what's just normally called your vector scope. What the vector scope is, is this is a measurement of a color wheel here, uh, the colors that exist in any image. I'm going to go to my color wheels down here, and it, this is basically a replica of these wheels down here. You've got these uh, yellow points, green points, cyan, blue, magenta, red points, and this is all in the same geographical location as this wheel right here. What makes these colors be where they are on the wheel is basically uh, what they call complementary colors. It's how far these colors are away from each other. Uh, these are actually opposite or what they call complementary colors, things that are on the opposite side of the wheel. So if you go over here and you go from uh, the greens and go across, you've got magenta. If you have a lot of magenta, it's absent of green and vice versa. If you have a lot of blue, it's absent of orange and vice versa. So as you go from blue and uh, move over to the opposite side of the wheel, you got yellow, red to cyan, green to magenta. Uh, these are opposite colors or complementary colors. And the reason why they call them complementary colors is I, I, I believe they, they actually complement each other when they're on screen. Oftentimes you'll see a bluish background with a very warm subject. So you have uh, what's called the teal versus orange look where you have orange on one side uh, for the subject that's kind of this warmer look and then the background is blue, kind of bluish and cold looking. So that makes this contrast that complements the, the, the image and makes you kind of pay attention more to the subject. So this is a basic, what they call, hue wheel. This, uh, this vector scope measures the hue of your image, shows you where you have concentrations of specific colors. Uh, right here we've got uh, probably, we've got a heavier concentration of reds and yellows here, kind of pushing out towards the reds and yellows. And the further it gets out from this midpoint right here is representative of what we call saturation. Now, hue is the basic uh, color that you're dealing with on uh, within an image. If you have a very blue sky, you've got uh, a, a blue hue. If you've got green leaves, you've got a, hue, a green hue. If, you, if you've got a red shirt, you've got a very red hue. So just depending on what colors you have in the image, that's that, that's your hue. Now, your saturation deals will have the exact same hue. It's not changing the hue, but it's changing the intensity of the hue. So saturation is intensity, whereas hue is just the general color shade. So if we move under basic correction here and we grab our saturation, this will show you how these scopes work here. I grab saturation and drag it down. Look at our saturation over there on the vector scope. So I drag it down to where there's zero saturation. Everything sucks into that little point. And if everything sucks into that little point, you basically are left with no color. This is a black and white image. It's a grayscale image now with zero color. If you grab your saturation and drag it out, this is intensifying that saturation. And now look how overly saturated the image is. So it still has the same colors that are in the bricks and the lights and the hair and the blue and the blue light coming outside. But now it's just more intensified. One thing you've got to be familiar with when color grading is also legal limits. What they call legal limits. Now with the vector with the with the waveform, you have legal limits of 100 and zero IRE. Uh, most engineers in the industry for broadcast industry, this mostly comes from the broadcast industry when they're preparing shows on uh, on tape to air uh, over the television set. They would check the calibration on on the the uh, the movie or the commercials that were showing, and they would double check to make sure that they would not reach these limits of zero and one hundred. It was actually a safety feature in that if they reached those limits, the TV would oftentimes roll. If it was brightness levels, the TV would have rolling problems. You'd see it like an actual roll on these old cathode ray tube televisions. So the, these IREs were set to make sure that they didn't exceed those. And saturation, what you got when you reach saturation limits is you had bleeding. You'd have color channel bleeding and color separation. A lot of people have still want to create that kind of that uh, VHS look where they do that intentional effect of color separation to make it look like an old VHS camera. Uh, but with that for th those older formats, that's what these were created for. But now these have been adopted by the movie industry just as I wouldn't know if so much as, as legal standards as much as suggestions. So over here in the vector scope, uh, what, when we're dealing with legal limits, these here are image legal limits up here. That's your limit for red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, so on. Uh, but out here, these are legal limits for graphics. Graphics have a higher tolerance of intense colors, uh, and they support intense colors. But when you oversaturate an image, you start looking like this. And this is kind of giving you a warning here. Typically, when you're saturating an image, about one third to half of the way out, you're going to start seeing too much saturation in your image. And see, that's a little bit beyond. And some of them have higher tolerance uh, levels, like magenta is further away uh, than blue is. So yeah, so some of them will have higher tolerances than by their very nature than uh, than other colors up here on your vector scope. So the vector scope is used to measure two major things: your general hue of your image and your saturation. You're prayed.
Now you probably recognize this sort of shape here. You saw the kind of the similar shape when we were looking at the waveform. This is basically image from left to right. That's your complete image right there. But this is in what we call the red channel. With any video camera that you're using these days, pretty much every camera that we use these days has what we, uh, records your image in three different color channels. Now your image sensor in your camera will have uh, certain photo sites that are sensitive to just red colors. But they're not just sensitive to just red colors, but they're, different, they're sensitive to different levels of hue, saturation, and luminance in your red channel. And that's what this basically is here. This was measuring two major things here. And this waveform here is measuring basically the luminance of the red colors in your, your red channel here. Uh, and this is measuring the luminance of your green channel from left to right of your image. And this is measuring the luminance levels of your blue channel. When you composite all three of those together, you basically get a full color image. Oftentimes, if you go to, in fact, we can even go to curves here and we can choose the green channel and we can turn the green channel completely off. Now we're left with the red and blue. We can grab the red and we can pull down the red and we're left with the blue channel. And then look at this, we got our blue channel left and it's just showing us our, our, our blue values and darkness, brightness, and, and notice the blue channel is darker than the red. As we, as we restore the red and we bring down the blue maybe, then the image seems brighter. So the red channel is more prominent in this image. It's more prominent and dominant in this image and it's brighter as well. So the luminous levels are brighter in the red channel. If we go up and grab, if we grab the red and drag that down and we grab the blue and drag it down, we're left with the green channel, and the green channel seems like it, like it might be just as bright or brighter than the red channel as well. So what happens when you have uh, other channels that are brighter or more prominent over others, you get to generalize what we would call balance. Now, this shot is balanced more toward the reds and greens than it is the blue. Let's go to our exposure here. I'm going to pump up the exposure, and I'm going to add a little contrast here, and I'm going to actually darken the darks in this shot here as well give a little bit more contrast so we can kind of see this image a little bit better. Now if we looked at our vector scope here and we kind of look at the general, uh, looks like with the window spikes right there, we have more of a blue, a blue, blue prominence in the window. But then as we move over to the middle of the room, look at this, the red is higher and the green is just slightly lower than the red. And then look at the blue, this kind of similar shaped mountain. This is lower than the red. And then the spikes kind of go off into the blue again. But look, this, this channel is more prominent and the green is a little more prominent than the blue. Therefore, this shot is not necessarily balanced. When a shot is balanced, your red channel, your green channel, and your blue channels are kind of in a similar area, and then the color will end up looking proper. And this shot looks like it's probably a little bit more warm to me. So if we, if we try to bring up that blue channel a little bit, let's do this and grab our slider, temperature slider here, and we're going to pull down the reds and push up the blues a little bit. Look how that cools that off. So you look at the before and after on this. See how that kind of takes that red, a little bit of that red out of that shot there? See if we pull it further over, then of course you start getting more of a dominating blue channel. But as they get in the middle, your color looks like it is properly balanced or properly, properly color balanced. If we add it, let's uh, bring down the green a little bit and get these kind of even. And there you go. So this scope is really good to help you color balance your shot so your colors look accurate. So your shot doesn't look too orange, doesn't look too blue, doesn't look too green. And that's where these scopes really help. Okay, so for now, I'm, that, that's all I'm going to talk about in this episode. In the next episode, we'll show you how to use these controls, all the controls over here. And then the following tutorial, we'll start showing you how to actually color grade this project.